What's up guys, so today I'm getting dry needled by one of my PT friends. I'm in a lot of shin splint and calf pain. I went to a chiropractor yesterday and he did this like neurological reset type of thing with the whole like mind to muscle connection. Seemed to really help, but I'm still in pain and hoping to just kind of like expedite the process of getting better since I'd like to like run and not be in pain. So we're gonna get dry needled for the first time and see what that's about. Goodness gracious, these guys are moving anywhere. This is where I'm going. <laughs> You're not working on me today, though, are you? Uh, what? You're not working on me today, though, are you? No, I'm not. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> Hi, Krista. Hello. Y'all are so nice here. This is not what I expected. Also, the Spirit Halloween next door is a nice touch. Yeah. You have what now? <laughs> <laughs> I like stabbing needles into people. Oh, so this is more of a thing for you, not for me. Yes. You're excited to do well, this, yeah? yeah. I do it, like, all the time anyway. So how big are these things? Uh, these are two inches, and these other ones are going to be It's going to go two inches into my shin? In your shin. calf, in your calf. No, the shin oh, is okay. one. I'm only slightly nervous. I've never been needled before. I don't know what to expect. Aaron, is this going to hurt? Yep. Oh. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Have you had them done to you? Me? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. A ton of them. You? I do it to myself all the time. To yourself? Sounds. <laughs> you can do it to yourself? Yeah, I do my jaw sometimes. <gasps> yeah. I do my, I People are crazy. This is a solution to no more shin splints. No more shin splints? I'm not filming my shin. I don't want to show that. I'm good, yeah. Yeah, full sin. Oh gosh. <laughs> I don't want to look at it though. I'm going to do two here, and then I'll have you go kind of on your side. I'll do two here. Okay. Hey, you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Probably going to be a little bit more. That's it? That's that one. Oh. <laughs> but when you get up here, you may get a little cramp. Especially in the calf, you're probably gonna get a muscle cramp. Okay. That's cool. Okay, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? For the calf, you're probably gonna be sore as you walk out. And then Hobble. pain relief, it just kind of depends. Like sometimes it's sort of, you're good. Sometimes you have the pain relief right away. Sometimes it's the next day. Mm. I have a patient that it's like two days later. Okay. That did not hurt at all. So hopefully things feel better. Hopefully the shin splints eventually go away. Uh, I'd love to be able to run without any pain because I do enjoy running. It's just if my shins feel like they're splitting down the middle and the bone is literally cracking, you know, that's typically not good. So um, thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Krista. Thank you, Harrison. Love you guys. Okay, so today I'm flying out to Baltimore to meet a guy named Alex Eubank, who is a big fitness influencer. He's also a huge inspiration to me because he's a professing believer in the industry, has a crazy physique, and we're going to catch a chest day. We started playing some Warzone, some Siege together and all that. That's how we got connected. But uh, yeah, we're going to go catch a pump, so let's do it. Your dog gnawed on me for like three minutes. Bro, she sucks my toes like crazy. <laughs> yeah. Bro, she like ate my whole, like, like my whole foot in her mouth. I swear, I put it on my Instagram story. <laughs> <laughs> you into feet nugget? Mmm. Mmm. That's a hand though. Oh, there you go. No better time than having you in my corner, right? Code Alex Frog here. <laughs> Alpha Never lose a second of promotion. Huh? Never lose a second of promotion. Dude, that's the one thing on like flat bench. You seem like you were at the top I, of the I, get, I get it. I did. Yeah. Is this like tricep, you think? Or is it just like nervous system? Tricep's definitely the weakest part for me. My lockout's usually pretty set too. Yeah. Yeah, my chest always can get it out like the half part, and it's like the last part, it's always a lockout. So really... That was good though. Thank you.
exhausted. <laughs> no one cares. <sighs> All right, so I'm back in Dallas uh, for my trip in Baltimore. It was fantastic, had a great time. Uh, but I'm back and I wanted to finish out the video by telling you guys about my testimony, which in case you don't know what that word means is basically my story of how I came to know Christ. I have a lot of stuff going on in my life in terms of gaming, sports, working out, like there are a lot of facets that I pursue and I would say are part of my, you know, personality. But the most important one I feel like a lot of you don't expressly know about is the fact that I am a Christian, I'm a believer, and I feel like that's the most important part about me, and I wanted to tell you guys a little bit more about that. I've always been in and around the church. My family was uh, a Christian family from the start, which um, was a huge blessing just because I got to witness two parents live out how I should be living, how I should be reading my Bible, going to church, treating others. I got to see that firsthand and that was amazing. But like most kids, I was so distracted by competition and sports and fun, entertainment, that living this Christian life that I was supposed to live wasn't very appealing to me. I was so selfish and I wanted to pursue what I wanted to pursue. I wanted to do what I wanted to do with my time and ultimately everything was self. and. Nothing was selfless. I wasn't, I wasn't doing anything for anyone else and I wasn't doing anything for the Lord. I wasn't doing anything to represent a Christian. I was, uh, it's a text message. I was, I was solely living for what gratified myself. Which yeah, sounds great and everything until you realize that that is just a empty pit of unsatisfaction because no matter what you pursue, whether that's fame, fortune, uh, you know, whatever else everyone's into, you ultimately realize you just want more of it. I mean, and that's what I've witnessed firsthand even with uh, with the whole YouTube stuff and everything is that you can have so much success in specific areas, but you're always just gonna want more. And then once you reach a certain point, you're just gonna wanna keep what you have and then work to improve that. And so it's a never ending cycle of being like, well, I'm never really gonna be satisfied, so what's next? I saw myself as being a very selfish person. I love sports, I loved competition. I mean, I still do. And it's still probably an area of struggle for me is that I'm just very competitive. And so, um, but thankfully now I view it through a Christian lens. But back then, I mean, I, I didn't really have that balance. By God's grace, when I was 13, he opened my heart to see and understand what it meant to truly be a Christian. What it meant that I was a sinner who needed a savior. I was a selfish brat living for myself and because God is a righteous and holy and perfect God, He couldn't have that relationship with me because I've made mistakes. I, I wanted nothing to do with Him. And so in order for us to have the relationship that He wants, I had to be perfect, which I couldn't be. But God in His merciful and all sovereign plan sent His Son Jesus Christ to live the perfect life that I should have lived. And then die on a cross, taking the punishment for my sins, for my wretched life and then he rose again three days later conquering over death so that I need not be afraid of death. So now even though I am an imperfect human being, I make mistakes, I still am, I'm still going to sin against the Lord. Christ's blood has atoned for my sins. He's covered the penalty of all of my mistakes no matter what I've done and he's declared me right in the eyes of God. So now what this means for me is I need to live a life that's honoring to the Lord. I want to emulate Christ and though I'm not going to live a perfect life like he did, I can strive to be better like him each and every day. And that's in the form of reading his word, going to church, loving the people, the believers, serving others, basically trying to live as selfless of a life as possible. But being a good person and, and doing good deeds and, and selfless acts and all that, that's not what saves me. And I definitely wanna make that very clear that the whole reason that I am a believer and I've been covered and washed by the blood of Christ is because He opened my heart and my eyes to believe. He died on the cross. He rose again from the grave. So it puts you in this seat of, I did nothing. I didn't merit salvation. I didn't merit mercy from Him. Apart from Christ and apart from God's love, I would be condemned to hell forever. I would have nothing to do with the Lord. Would have never known what it meant to have a true relationship with God was if He hadn't saved me. And all this isn't easy. I mean, I've learned first and foremost, especially through content creation and just being on the internet for my job, that living a Christian life and not looking like the world is really tough. Just because you're a believer doesn't mean you're not gonna sin, you're not gonna fall short because we're human beings. We are fallible creatures by nature and that's why Jesus Christ had to come and die for us because apart from Him, we would not choose Him. And so the best way for me to live a 
godly Christian life, especially through my content, is making sure that all the glory is directed back to God. I know that He gave me these platforms. He gave me everything that I have. I've been entrusted with a lot of responsibility. I've been entrusted with a lot of assets and I ultimately know that it all comes from God and it wasn't because of my own doing. So that's why I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about me, who I am. I want to be a difference maker online. I want to be a difference maker in content creation. I want there to be I want there to be a noticeable difference about the content that you watch from me versus somebody else. I want you to see the love of Christ that I have, the joy that I possess, knowing now that I have a free gift of eternal salvation, of true satisfaction and true fulfillment, and that's ultimately the most important thing in my life and what I'm living for each and every day. I believe anxiety, stress, fear, all these things that that plague our minds on on a daily basis can be helped by a relationship with Jesus Christ and getting in his word, worshiping him because he's got the answers, he's got the ability and powers that far exceed our own. The world is a toxic place and sometimes it can be really, really tough to deal with our own mental battles or whatever our circumstances are for that day. But ultimately the thing that keeps me going and keeps me on my feet every day is knowing that I have a God who loves me, who created me specifically in my unique way to bring honor and glory to him and one day I'll be reunited with him in eternity in heaven. That's my testimony. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I love you guys and I'll see you on the next one.